Hi everybody, I am Pascal Lurien, professor at Telecom Paris, a grand école in France, Saclay, Paris. And the subject of this talk is the Internet of Secure Elements, Concepts and Applications. This paper introduces Internet of Secure Elements paradigm and some application. The main idea is to integrate TLS 1.3 server in Secure Element, TLS SC. These servers are identified by their server name attribute, SN. On the client side, authentication procedures are optionally hosted in dedicated identity module, TLS IM. In Internet of Things context, TLS SC stacks enhance object security. For example, TLS SC provides cryptographic resources, that's to say key store, or interacts with sensors and actuators. We present grid of secure elements optionally associated to secure element processor CEPT called Internet of Secure Element Server IOSC. Such server supports on-demand TLC deployment. It also connects TLC devices to Internet. Finally, we detail the procedures for transferring exclusive property of TLS server to its users. Secure storage and temper resistant computing is a major security requisite for online services. In cloud computing environment, these operations are performed by Hardware Secure Modules, HSM, a piece of hardware providing secure key storage and temper-resistant computing. HSM security requirements are defined by the FIPS 142 standard security requirements for cryptographic modules. Four levels are defined whose evaluation assurance level, EAL, is ranging, according to common criteria CC, from EL1 to EL4, EL7+, plus being the maximum level. In many Internet of Things framework, such as Thread or Open Connectivity Foundation, DTLS or TLS stacks will realize users' authentication and communication security. These procedures and secret key may run in secure elements or trusted execution environment. We consider a personal HSM as a black box, that's to say a vault, running a TLS server. Embedded resources are remotely used thanks to TLS secure channel. This personal relationship suggests authentication based on symmetric credentials, for example, pre-share key, PSK, as defined by TLS 1.3. Due to secure element high security level up to EAL 6 plus, wide availability, for example as Java cards, and low price, a few dollars, an approach relies on secure elements running TLS 1.3 PSK server, that's to say TLS for secure element TLS SC. TLS SC technology initially addressed security issues for IoT devices, but TLS SC chips can also be plugged in grids, providing internet connectivity. Here is a short state of art addressing secure elements and secure element server, such as SIM server or remote APDU called secure server. Secure elements are temper-resistant microcontroller units, MCU, whose security is enforced by hardware and software countermeasures. They are available under multiple form factors, such as smart cards, integrated SIM, embedded SIM, or surface-mounted devices. They are used in multiple applications, such as bank card, EMV, UC modules, electronic passport, and Internet of Things. Many secure elements embed a Java Virtual Machine, GVM, and execute programs written in Java Card, a subset of Java language. Secure elements' memory resources are about a few tens kilobytes for flash, a few kilobytes for SRAM. Therefore, embedded applications are typically dedicated to cryptographic procedures and manage secure communication channels. According to ISO 7816, secure elements receive TPD requests, transport protocol data units, with a 5-byte headers and optional payload 
up to 255 bytes. And return responses comprising an optional payload up to 256 bytes and two status byte SW1 and SW2. Application protocols data units, RPDU, are transported by one or several TPDUs depending on their size. It is important to notice that secure elements are managed by non-preemptive operating system. Most of SIM servers are involved in voice over IP VOIP services. SIM boxes, also called SIM banks, are used by VOIP gateways. They provide local mobile services via IP infrastructures or reduce communication cost. For example, SIMARE Grid runs TCP IP server working with proprietary protocols. SIM cards are identified by slot numbers, typically a session select a slot, reset a SIMS, performs APDU request and free the slot. Rack's server was designed to provide secure element grid over a TCP IP diamond, secured by the TLS protocol. Client and server are mutually authenticated by X509 certificates. Each slot in which is plugged a secure element is identified by its SEID secure element identifiers. The client certificate is associated to a list of SEIDs that it may access. Typically, a session performs power up, exchange APDU, and power off secure element identified by its SEID. Now we are going to introduce TLS IM and TLS SE. TLS 1.3 the last version of the Transport Lawyer Security was released in 2018. The main target is to realize perfect forward secrecy PFS thanks to diffie change over elliptic curve ECDHE. This exchange is authenticated either by X509 certificates and signed message with private keys or by HMAC procedures using symmetric secrets, that to say, pusher key PSK. The following cryptographic procedures are required. SHA-256 hash function, SEC-P-256-R1 elliptic curve key generation, SEC-P 256R1 Diffie-Hellman Exchange Computation, SECP 256R1 ECDSA Signatures, and AES Procedures. Java Card 3.0.4 API provide these cryptographic resources. In TLS PSK, two procedures associated with PSK are needed for authentication purposes. Verify data, compute a HMAC included in the client hello message. HKDF extract computes the unchecked secret from the elliptic curve defilement exchange value. When certificates are used, authentication is performed by signatures procedures such as elliptic curve digital signatures algorithm, ECDSA. Here is an illustration of TLS IAM secure element used by TLS clients in order to protect their authentication credentials. Nevertheless, dedicated callback procedures are required in the TLS software stack. This photo presents an IoT board including a SE050 secure element used as TLS identification module. It will realize authentication procedures for symmetric and asymmetric use case. It offers other services such as random number generation, public key generation, and Diffie-Hellman calculation. These functionalities may simplify the design of TLS server for IoT boards 
with modest computing resources. TLS for Secure Lehman, TLS SE, is a TLS 1.3 PSK server running in Secure Elements and written in Java Card. The softwares comprise four main elements. Data exchange performs segmentation and reassembly operation. TLS packets are encapsulated in APDUs. Due to Secure Elements small SRAM size, packet length is limited to about 500 bytes. TLS state machine manage server states machine. Incoming and outgoing packets are processed accordingly by TLSLib. TLSLib is a set of check record packet procedures, parsing incoming packets, and make record packet procedures, building outgoing packets according to the TLS state. Cryptolib delivers all cryptographic functions required by TLS PSK. Here are some figures about TLS SE performance. The number of exchange bytes is about 540 bytes, 320 receive, and 220 sent. Uh, the time required to open a TLS session is about uh, 720 milliseconds. Um, SHA-256 operation cost about uh, 7.5 microseconds per byte. Uh, key generation need about 80 milliseconds. Uh, Diffie-Hellman computation over elliptic curve required about 40 milliseconds. And uh, ECDSC signatures cost about uh, 50 milliseconds. The secure channel processing cost about 0 0.6 milliseconds per byte. A secure channel packet comprises 5 byte headers, a payload encrypted in AES CTR mode, and a 16 byte tag. A secure element processor, CEP, realizes hardware and software features needed when an ISO 7816 smart card is used by a computing system supporting UART, I2C, or SPI interface. Furthermore, as previously mentioned, secure elements use non-preemptive operating systems and blocking request response parading may impact processing performance. The CEP manage ISO 7816 communication. It provides a bridge with host interface such as UART or I2C. By default, the clock frequency applied on the clock pin is divided by D slash F factors with D equal to 1 and F equal to 372. The CEP provides this clock. For example, a 4 MHz clock gives a bit time named E2 by ISO 7816 standard of 93 microseconds. In Arduino context, we observe a functional limit of about 4 times 372 cycles, that's to say 93 microseconds for 16 MHz clock, 31 microseconds for 72 MHz clocks with F equal 1 and D equal 2. Here is an illustration of a secure element processor using a STM32 microcontroller. The STM32 microcontroller has a 72 MHz clock, 64 kilobyte flash, and 20 kilobyte RAM. It provides I2C interface supporting frequency up to 400 kHz. I2C message comprise 3 byte header, NAT, PCB, and LED, a payload, and 2 CRC bytes. The structure is similar to TIGAL1 protocol and is used by some I2C secure elements. For ISO 7816 request, payload is an APDU request. For ISO 7816 responses, 
payload is an IPDU response. If an ISO 7816 blocking communication is in progress, the SEP returns a particular PCB, which means in progress, with LEN sets to zero. The minimum ETU is about 31 microseconds, what lead to a throughput of about 3. Kilobyte per second. The security of an IoT board, typically built over a system on chip, may rely on secure element with telesys, with telesysys tag. Here is an IoT device with a Wi Fi SOC, ESP8266, TLSSC Java card, and its associated SEP, Atemega328, with 16 MHz clock, 2 KB RAM and 32 kilobyte flash. There are four use cases. Authentication only, TLSSE act as identity module with additional features such as random number generation, public key generation, and DFLMAN calculation. TLSSE has secure hardware TLS stack. All TLS operations are performed within TLSSE application. When TLS session is open, the secure channel is ready for external use. Using only TLSSE internal resources, for example, Secure Element embeds a key store. This software entity provides cryptographic services, interface by a shell, processing ASCII encoded command lines. This shell is protected by the TLS 1.3 server. Using TLSSC for virtual input-output commands, some commands received through TLS 1.3 secure channels are exported in clear form to SEP or SOC processors. They are executed and typically imply interaction with sensor or actuators. A response is returned in clear form and returned to client through the secure channel. An Internet of Secure Element Server manages a set of secure elements used by two TCP servers, RAX and TLS. As mentioned before, RAX transport ISO 7816 message over TLS and therefore enables application downloading in secure element identified by the SCID attributes. For this reason, RAX provide an administrative plane. When TLSSC applications are downloaded in secure element grid, a set of TLS 1.3 servers are ready for use. A common technique in Internet is to deploy a TLS front server which send and receive TLS message to from backend servers identified by their server name. Upon its physical reset, a secure element returns an ISO 7816 message named answer to request, including an attribute called historical byte up to 15 bytes. This attribute may be defined via global platform API. Therefore, TLS secure element are associated to server name, secure element name, found in the answer to request historical bytes. The from TLS server defines user plane. It communicates with TLS servers embedded within secure element identified by the secure element name. In the user's plane, secure element application communicate with remote TLS client. The user requests the service provider to deploy a TLS SE application. The service provider downloads the application in a particular secure element identified by its SEID. Upon inst instantiation, the TLS SE app generates a pair of public and private key. Thereafter, the application provider binds SEN to SEID thanks to a dedicated RAX command. At this step, the TLS SE server is a TLS node identified by its SEN and TCP IP socket. The application provider reads the public key and generates a certificate that to say the ECDSA signatures to integer of the public key hash with the certification authority private key. The application provider transfers PSK, that to say PSK provider, and SEN to user. The attestation procedure transfers TLS SE property to user. It relies on the fact that TLS SE server can manage only a single session at a given time and cannot be cloned. The user opens a TLS PSK session according to TLS 1.3 
A handshake secret, HS, is shared between client and server. The user reads the public key, reads the certificate, and checks its content with the certification authority public key. It generates a random value, whose value, concatenated with the handshake secret, is signed with ECDC algorithm by the TLS SC app private key. The user checks the signatures with the TLS SC public key. Upon success, the user modifies the PSK. The TLS SC device is now ready to use. Thank you for your attention.